Generations of American families made it a staple of the breakfast table. Orange juice. Now, though, demand is declining and OJ sales are slipping. Christine Johnson is here to explain. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Benita and Anthony. The Florida citrus industry is about a $9 billion industry, but for 15 years now, sales of orange juice have been anything but sunny. Carl. After lunch, a box of nails will fall out of my truck, blowing two of your tires. Nearest gas station? Three miles. I think I got more issues. For decades, orange juice has been synonymous with a fresh way to start any day. But lately, it seems Americans' appetite for OJ is getting squeezed. Time to open your refrigerator for a refreshing taste of sunny Florida. Its popularity first caught on in the 1950s after a concentrated push by the Florida citrus industry and a series of scientific breakthroughs that allowed orange juice to be mass produced. There's definitely a correlation between the advertisements that you saw in the 50s and 60s and adoption of orange juice in American households because it, it introduced the product to consumers and it told them what it was good for. It was good for breakfast, it was good for energy, it was good for vitamin C, it was a good pick-me-up. For the next half century, production of orange juice skyrocketed. At its peak in 1998, Americans consumed 1.6 billion gallons of OJ. Well, we do both love the goodness of Trot 50 because of the 50 percent less sugar. But concerns over sugar consumption, changing eating habits on the go, and the citrus greening disease affecting Florida's orange groves have sales down every year for the past 15 years. In the case of the, the Florida growers, I mean, they're really trying to band together so that they can try their best to stem these declines because this idea of, you know, oranges grown in Florida is not really getting consumers to pick it up off the shelves in the way that it used to. And on top of that, today the supermarket shelves are crowded with many other juice and energy drinks, competition that didn't exist 15 years ago. And the price of a box of oranges is projected to increase every year, which will likely then be passed on to the, consu the consumer. Anthony and Benita. Christine Johnson. Thanks, Christine. Roberto Ferdman writes about the food and consumer industries for the digital news outlet Quartz. His article, How America Fell Out of Love with Orange Juice, was posted this week. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Roberto, let's talk about some of the things that, that, that Christine was talking about here. I mean, there are a lot of factors contributing to the decline in sales of orange juice, but what do you think the most important one is? Um, it's not really close. The most important thing is definitely a disease called citrus greening, which is basically pummeling citrus trees, orange trees specifically, around the world and they came to Florida in the late 90s and it's pretty much affecting every single citrus tree in Florida. I found fascinating that your article talks also a lot about our changes as consumers that a lot of people don't sit down to a breakfast anymore and that's why maybe this drink isn't as popular. That's right. So a lot of the marketing push behind orange juice was you should drink this drink that's healthy for you in the morning and get your vitamin C at breakfast time. It's part of your complete breakfast but now Americans are either not eating breakfast or eating breakfast on the go uh, and skipping their orange juice in the morning. And that's a trend that's likely to continue. Absolutely. I mean, the way, that we, the way in which you see it is, you know, people are going around eating uh, breakfast sandwiches in the morning. Uh, fast food sales are up a lot. Starbucks is releasing new breakfast sandwiches. Taco Bell recently got into the breakfast game. Um, and it's pretty much only going to continue from here on out. I'm not going to lie, Taco Bell with a waffle taco. It's a, it's a little intriguing. I need to know more about it. But it's interesting because you predict the future of orange juice sales. There is a future. It just could be a different brand of orange juice than what we're currently seeing. Right. If you look at orange juice sales, they're not falling as fast as orange juice consumption. So people are still drinking orange juice. They're drinking more expensive orange juice. That's because it is more expensive, but also because when people drink orange juice, they want orange juice that's as fresh as possible, mm -hmm. which costs more to produce. So you're talking about orange juice essentially becoming more of a niche product. Absolutely. So maybe it disappears from the everyday breakfast table, but not from the brunch table. What I mean, you know, we recently have seen Milk admit that they got to change the way that they are doing their ad campaigns. Could orange juice just tailor and, and maybe attract a new audience by changing their marketing? That's a good question. So Milk doesn't have as much of a tie to breakfast as orange juice does, but mm -hmm. Milk has pitched it being itself being drunk at different points of the day. So maybe part of orange juice 
is uh, advertising pitches for people to drink it, not just in the morning, but at other times during the day. Well, I mean, we've seen these advertising pitches. I mean, this, the same kind of advertising pitch is actually kind of what made orange juice an everyday product, right? And way back in, you know, back in the 50s. Yeah, short after, well, orange juice really wasn't drunk by Americans uh, until the late 1940s when they came out with uh, what people know as from concentrate. And after that, they pitched it as a health drink, as a breakfast drink, and it just boomed. Um, so there's no question that marketing can definitely help Americans fall back in love with orange juice. Well, hopefully people are having orange juice while they're watching us this morning. <laughs> Roberta Ferdman, thank you so much.